Hey guys, how you doing? We're looking ahead towards this weekend's race at Darlington. Now I have a wicked headache right now, so I'll probably do the truck and Xfinity tomorrow. Um, a lot of things to go over regarding what we saw at Kansas leading into Darlington. So let's go ahead and start it. Probably going to be uh, a longer video per the usual stuff this month. So when we look at how people ran at Kansas, we can event, we can analyze this race in two different fashions. One, this is how they line up on the chart. Also, now that we have done this year's Kansas race, we could just go ahead and delete last year's Kansas race, spring race, out of the equation for all of eternity. And when we look at this race here and how it broke down of where people were running, of how they performed on pit lane, of how they performed in the race, and yada, 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 and we'll go over the race in, in uh, quite a lot of detail, but this is where everybody is. So, like, your best car was Larson, the Hamlin, the the busher, as we mentioned, and yet again, I apologize for the preview video last weekend being taken down. Didn't even notice until Sunday morning um, by by somebody trolling, so we completely wasted just an hour of my life doing that. Um, but as we looked at Dover, and I mentioned in the live show as well, but we looked at Dover as a pretty significant point in the month of May of where everybody should be at entering Dover, entering Kansas, and entering the Charlotte uh, race later this month, okay? And the reason being is when we look at the 1.5s in general, we typically have the same guys running well at all these races. It's not based on track history. Like, who gives a shit how people performed at this track in 2015? Who cares? Who cares about how they did in, in this, you know, in, in another generation of car? It is where are they at now. We understand that all... We can pull data points from all the 1.5s, okay? And we want to ideally focus on, at least for me, yet, yet again, like for this month, every year... I don't listen to another show. I don't listen to what the industry is doing. I'm in my own little bubble my of, of just me. I'm Bubble Boy, and I'm just by myself, head to the ground, like just worrying about my own stuff. And what I do is I just look at where people are based on the recent 1.5s that we're at because you can pull data from each and every one of those that are very similar. Okay, Dover, you know, very aerodynamic in terms of sensitive to other cars uh, and... How you got to run like it's very difficult to pass and get through traffic there vegas is very similar to kansas uh how you have to run how you have to run the wall because you just run everywhere dover yeah sure you're on the middle practically just a one roof racetrack okay we get to darlington hey guess what we're running the wall again okay hey guess what charlotte thin track now the races and clients we're running the wall we're running single file like all these tracks are the exact same and you can see that very much so that we're we're, we're bringing data points from um these tracks and use them so like larson has been pretty much the de facto guy this year and yet again we removed texas because just we had so many yellows and so many breaks in the action and stuff and so many different things going on that i've just chosen to not include that data point in here but we see you know very very similar data points uh there if you look at that track as well but uh nothing shocking here uh entering or leaving dover it was very much a case of where people should be at just off the trailer entering this entering this month for example like the reddick for me when he underperformed at what he should have done at dover was an indication and yet again uh, a lot of this isn't coming down to me being right or wrong or taking victory lives i'm just analyzing things the way that i would analyze them myself and then i just show you how i'm doing that and stuff um, but the uh underperformance that reddick showed at dover was very concerning of the speed that they would probably show at kansas uh, despite the fact that Kansas was such a great track for them uh, in 2311 in general. Um, and so this was this was very, very concerning. Uh, same thing with how Bell has been able to get through um, the field, which has been you know quite poorly and stuff. Um, Bell ends up being the sixth best car at Kansas, but starting the pole, you know, like I had no interest in... Actually, here, we'll just bring up my old stuff as well. We can kind of review how I'm approaching stuff. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Kansas. So when I look at where how I built lines and what I did was you can see that I had no Christopher Bell, uh, I had no Tyler Reddick. Um, very much, you know, like when I'm building, because I hand build everything. Everybody knows that, and people are wild that I do that. But, you know, it takes me about an hour and a half, two hours each, each race um, and stuff. And so, like, for me, like with Chastain, you know, I end up having 20% Chastain. Field has, field have, field has 10 I'm already double the field and I don't have to do anything crazy there. Um, you know, whether it works out or doesn't work out, like, 
that's how I would view it. Also, like Larson's the best car. We we probably want a lot of Larson outside of him wrecking out. We want to build primarily what happens if Larson doesn't work or what happens if, you know, Larson and Chastain work. What's well, most likely, you know, you know, Truex or Hamlin are having bad days. You gotta focus more on place differential back of the field. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm very, very happy with this with this weekend following what I did at Dover and compared to what I did at Las Vegas. And so the reason why I'm bringing this stuff up is, yet again, I'm just reviewing stuff out loud for everybody to see. And so when you compare, and I haven't done FanDuel um, in a few weeks. I'm probably going to get back to that this weekend at Darlington. Um, but when I focused on the builds that I wanted to get to, you're going to see that Las Vegas and Kansas end up being pretty similar in terms of where I'm going in terms of builds. And it was mainly because you had, you know, you have Larson, you know, or the main primary lap leader that you want to focus on. Uh, you know, Reddick was showing a lot of speed, expected to lead, and he did get there eventually, but it was very much underwhelming and underperforming um, at Las Vegas. But you can see, you know, following my aggression at Dover, my own personal aggression of, you know, start of the month, let's see if this will work out. This will probably be the best chance if it works out. It didn't work out. I just went back to building, you know, my regular degular stuff and focusing on um, – the three best guys in the circuit, regardless of where they started, Larson, Truex, and Hamlin. Um, and where did this go? Um, oddly enough, you know, same, not oddly enough. Um, where the heck is it? Where the heck is this? Reply. Oh, yeah. So, like, AD's point is a good example of uh, like what happened here of like I, I don't believe I don't understand how people are approaching these races I really I really don't I, I just cannot fathom how people are doing this when we look at Truex here let's just look at Truex's year so far and how he's doing in terms of potentially being a lap leader and this is coming from somebody who realized hey man I got lucky not having him at Las Vegas man I got lucky not having him at Dover. I don't even know how we're surviving these races without any, you know, without just being like blasted into, uh, you know, redepositing every time. Like when you look at Truex's runs here and you look at how he's running at, and we're just looking at the 1.5s, you know, we look at what he did at Phoenix. And this is just specifically trying to look at laps lane. I know it says it on the side, but it's easier to see. Here, because then you can also combine them with like the stages and points that he's getting. Excuse me. See that Truex, you know, runs seventh all day. Doesn't really do anything entering this race, and then we get to, um, I mean, also he's leading laps in pretty much every race so far. But we're looking at where he was at in like Fort Worth at Dover. Like Dover was like the real like alarm bell, you know. When we're looking at a guy who is pretty much the third best car on the circuit with the potential of leading laps and with the, I don't have it with me. Oh, screw it. Let's just look through these live. Let's just find where Truex is in terms of his laps, fast laps and laps led like, you know, 15 fastest laps. Like that's nothing to shake a stick at when you're like, running fourth, running fifth all day when you have, like, the fourth, fifth best car, you know? You know how you get the lead. Yet again, it's the same thing. Like, you don't go from 13, 12, 11 to third, fourth, and fifth. You go from third, fourth, and fifth to winning races and stuff. And when you look at just the fastest laps in general, like, laps led can determine or can show, like, okay, they really get lead and stuff. But if you're able to get, like, if you're able to scrape off fast laps, like, that's actually impressive, man. Uh, that's, uh, you know... You want to see that stuff. And so, like, when you're looking at the percentage, like, he has a, pr just speaking out loud, Truex is having a situation where his percentage of falling into fast laps, potentially getting the lap sled, and taking over the race lead, either from pit lane or if somebody runs in issues, and especially when you look at, like, where they had uh, started at this last race at Kansas with, uh, with, uh, with Hamlin, you know, 13th, 14th, like they are, they're pretty dead on arrival when it comes to like pit lane selection. Like they have, uh, they have really, really shitty pit stalls in those races. And so when we're looking back also, we're going to get the tricks in a second where I'm at in terms of data points that is actually noteworthy or to note and stuff. When you're looking back at this race here 
um, the Kansas race, which we'll just move forward. When you look at the Kansas race, you're seeing that, you know, we go green first stage, we go green second stage. And so at that point, you know, this race is only 267 laps. We go to lap 167, okay? We have done, we've gone over half the race. We have about 100 laps left, and we have a good feel, good data points, because we've gone green the whole time, okay, with two yellows each stage. So if you got to make changes or adjustments or whatever, you've had plenty of time to do that on pit lane. Um, we did not have a competition yellow, which quite, like, actually shocked me. <laughs> That's pretty crazy that they didn't do a competition yellow. Uh just because they have normally done that. But we didn't have a competition yellow, so we only had two yellows. Everything else was green. So you can realistically see where everybody was in terms of speed, in terms of what they were able to do during up into stage two. And then we get three yellows back to back to back to back to back. And then we get Kyle Busch spinning out of turn two like just an idiot to, to end the race. And so when you're looking at this race here, I personally have always, and this is not what this data set is, that's not what this is. This is the entire race together. Okay, but speaking out loud, seeing how things are going, following the race along, what I like to look at is when we have good green flag runs, we can see where everybody at. This is 173 laps, practically. I know we have, you know, 14 laps under yellow. Okay, so what is that? That's like 161 laps of just green flag conditions to see where everybody's out. There is literally no better data point to see where people were in this race than that right there. Because at this point, we have the three yellows, and we have people pitting because ideally, you don't know when this last yellow is going to come out. Okay, so like, I don't fault people for pitting at this point, you know, right off the bat. Like, if you, like, there's no reason to pit there unless you got a wave around or something stupid on this one. Then you get another yellow. And you're like, well, you know, we've gone a few laps. We're kind of closer to our number. Let's just pit here in case, you know, in case it goes green or whatever. So you get some people going down. You get off sequence compared to what the leaders are doing. And then they go green, then they get another yellow. So everybody who saw how many people pitted the last time will then pit this time. And so when you look at this run here, this 56-lap run, you know, and you look at a situation where it was like Ryan Blaney or somebody like that or even Truex Jr. who – um was much better on tires compared to the rest of the field in this run here. Like you're kind of skewing or not skewing, but it's not, you know, uh, not everybody's on an even playing field of what, in terms of what this data is looking at. And so what I want to do specifically, and exactly what I did at Texas on like that, uh, probably, I guess it was the Dover video, um, and go over like where everybody was during this like 100 and, you know, 61 lap you know, green flag run to see everybody falls in line at. And it gives you a good indication of where people were. We can kind of X out of all that now. So when we're looking at like where everybody was, I have them set up by the end of lap 166, which is pretty much where people should have fallen in line at. You know, also in terms of anomalies or surprises and stuff like that, I mentioned in the live show that anybody who shows speed in terms of like, it's one thing going from, it's one thing going from like, you know, mid pack to like, boom, you bounce up to 15th or something like that's, you know, we have anomalies like that, you know, here, here and there. But when you get like something like Chris Busher, you know, like this is actually respectful. Like you have to actively, you know, acknowledge that, hey, this is actual speed compared to certainly what they did at Las, I mean, we ran into issues at Las Vegas, but compared to like kind of, kind of the fall off that both of them both the RFK carts had at the end of the year, the struggle that they had at Las Vegas, Texas, and Dover, like the fact that you see Busher and then Brad also make a comeback of like this, because Brad also fell, fell back and fell down um, in this race. Like this is something like, okay, cool. That's like, that's a, uh, not something that you necessarily want to throw away or, or throw out. Now is like Busher going to come back and, and win, Darling or win Darlington this weekend? I mean, I doubt that. Highly doubt it. But like that's something to be, that's noteworthy. Same thing with like Chastain, as we identified, or as I identified, um, entering the race based on, you know, truly his price and what you could just do. Like he was under price. Like the fact that he was able to not only get around the, you know, twenty percent owned Bell um, at a much cheaper rate, but like he was able to go toe to toe with Kyle Larson. When we're looking at where these guys are at, let's just go ahead and. Uh, Kind of go through. We're gonna set this baby up right before we get to green flag pit stops. Uh, so we'll sort it by the early start of a race here. 
uh, right before everybody pits. And so you see that, like, you know, Larson, Chastain, you know, Bell and all these guys, like, this is, like, legit respectable speed. And you're going to, you know, some people might argue, of like, well, you know, you can actually race here at Kansas. I would argue you still can't fucking race at Kansas, okay? <laughs> like, you're, you're still just blogging. You can't do, like, anything. Like, the top line is where you wanted to be. Shout out to Busher for throwing the win away. All, all Busher had to do was just go to the top. If he goes to the top in three, he wins the race. It's so idiotic and stupid. Anyway, and when and it's not even like the whole field is there. Like, yeah, sure, out of the restarts or out like, you know, a lap or two after the restart, we'd have them be like four or five wide and stuff. But then they all, you know, they all spread out, pull away and stuff, you know. And so like when you had Chastain truly fighting with Larson, like having speed and still pulling away from people, like that's that's pretty respectful. That That's what you want to. That, that stuff you want to see. And, like, the fact that Busher is able to pass through the field is very, very impressive to see. You know, like, that. The, I mean, this is real stuff. This is real speed, you know. You have Larson and, and, and Chastain. Actually, this is when Chastain's leading. They start flip-flopping out of, the, uh, out of the pit selections here or coming out of the pits here. But, like, you know, Trek starts on the outside. Uh, does he... Uh, I'm pretty sure he was inside. I think Hamill was 13. So Truex is 13th. He gets stuck on the inside. Pro probably just, you know, stuck on the inside. People start railroading you on the outside, and you can't, you know, he falls back, and then he starts passing people, getting through, you know, showing that he has speed, slowly gets there, slowly gets there, you know. Pits happen, and he's one of the early guys to pit, so he gains some positions um, through the pit stops and stuff. And right now he's sitting like 8th, ninth. We're still green, so... You still have the um, the distance that the leaders have pulled on you compared to like where you're at at eighth place right now. So you know if you're running like you know five, six, seven, seven seconds off the lead, you know you can gain you know a position to off pit lane. But at this point, this isn't necessarily like oh man, Larson or Drake is just stuck running seventh. Most likely, he's not really truly around anybody to pass. The field has been spread out. So like this is still you know good to see from Trix. We go back in the pit lane again. And he gains more positions. And we get to the stage end, I do believe, whatever the case may be. Uh, running fifth all day, you know. We go through another pit cycle, basically just maintaining his position. Falls back one spot here. And at this point, like, that, this is, like, a great example of where Truex was. Fifth, sixth best car at this point in the race. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is everything past that. Also, just speak out loud. When I look at my process or my approach and how I'm building lineups... At this point in the race, you know, end of stage two, nobody's wrecked. Nobody's gotten stupid. You know, crazy things have, haven't happened. I mean, we have uh, Hemrick or Kraus, one of the colleague fellas. Like, they run completely so fucking long that they just, like, completely get off sequence. I'm pretty sure it's, uh, it's Kraus. Let's see. Maybe it was Hemrick. Yeah, it was fucking Kraus, dude. This guy dang clown, man. Because he runs, you know, and, and the fall off that you have, because you run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, you basically run 16 laps longer than everybody else. That means you've automatically not only gotten off sequence, but in terms of DFS and fast laps related, that means you have 16 lap fresher tires compared to the rest of the field. So when you're catching, when you're, when you're running your lap, you know, 52, that's like your first lap on new tires compared to everybody else who's already blown the, the rubber off the tires. And so that's why we have Kraus just right away with fast laps, just stealing fast laps. Absolutely hilarious madman here. Uh, completely like, in terms of the value range down at the bottom, Kraus, Haley, and it, especially at this point. It's literally just whoever's either gaining positions or getting off sequence. Like that, there is no if, ands, or buts. Like the fact that Crouch did that was just absolutely hilarious. Um, basically, because he just steals fast laps running dead last. Um, anyway, the reason I bring that up is at this point in the race, most lineups that were built, and I guess speaking towards me personally, because this was at this point, this was like a 6K type of day for me. Um, even um, not having any busher, the fact I don't know what people are doing, but a pretty successful day at this point. The process and everything has led to exactly pretty much how this race is going out outside of busher. Very very happy with the breakdown there. 
Um, and when you look at where like Byron is coming in at, um, because Byron, you know, he ends up finishing like 24th or something just due to uh, how the restarts and everything happen here. But he's able to get through the field as well. Now, it's it's not a case of, you know, he's going from, you know, 34th to finishing 10th. It's where should he be at compared to where he was at Dover in Las Vegas. Hey, guess what? You know, Larson or Byron was the, you know, 11th best car at Las Vegas. He was the 10th best car at Dover. Where is Byron just falling in line? Everything goes green. Everything goes the way they should. Everybody's just uh, like under green flag conditions with one stage. Where does Byron drive up to? He drives up to 13th, 14th, 12th. Where is he at? Where is, where, like, where, where, I need to move that one. He clicked. Where, where was he expected to be at? Right there. That's exactly where he runs in line at. You know, he's, he's very much competing and pushing guys out and, uh, you know, pushing guys out up top to where it's, you know, Larson, uh, Hamlin, Byron, or it's Larson, Ross Chastain, Busher, Byron, or um, Larson, Busher, Byron. Like, that's the builds that are, like, coming through at that moment, okay? The value play on the bottom is most likely going to Krause because he's scoring 30 points there. Um, but everybody else is just whoever can fit in with those guys. That's what we're trying to do. At least that's what I'm trying to do. Whenever I enter this week, whenever I enter races, I'm trying to land on the guys that are up top that should have the best cars in this race. Going back to like where, like if, I don't know, where I'm at, like if you're not playing this, this entire month, I think you're just playing it wrong. I think it's negative EV, like, right off the bat. Like, why, why would you not have this type of exposure rating to your guys? Like, why would you not be putting, like, half a grand on these on these four individual drivers? Now, Byron, in this case, so high because he had such a high likelihood of forcing guys out because he has a place differential play. And you combine that with what he's projected to do right around 10th, 11th, 12th. Like, he's, he's working perfectly fine there. But, like, Truex, third best car across the board, Entering the, like not even talking about Kansas. Let's look where he's at now. Oh wow, been like the third best car here. Okay, you look at Hamlin. Top three car and everything. You look at Larson. Like this should not be surprising. People, we're playing the same guys each and every week. And that's just how it is. Everything else, literally nothing else matters outside of what other guys are doing at the bottom to make those types of lineups work, and of how many people get in uh, with how races are going. Now, yet again, this is very much me focusing on where we're at at this point in the race. Because when you look at how this race ended, you know, you have very much, you know, you have you have Byron running issues. He, he can't really go anywhere. Um, you have a lot of place differential play come through. Also, it's a situation where, like, with how drastically different this race just fell apart, or not even fell apart, but happened, pretty sure the optimal lineup probably left, like, over $1,000 on the table. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't even played because... Um, like the like the four dollar winning lineup um, had Stenhouse in it, uh, but Nima check out scores him by like thirteen points, uh, and then the winning lineup in the fifteen was Hamlin, Larson, Elliott, Busher, Gillen, and Haley. Uh, whereas like you would never, or not even never, like it's very difficult to. I gotta move that again. I keep forgetting that it's not. Let's move this one here. Hold on. You know, it's very difficult to look at. Man, you should have been playing Haley and Gillen together. You know, when Gillen gains positions late, whole like stays out, um, you know, and, and falls through the field, but you know, runs better. I mean, at this point, let's see where Gillen was running in this. Running heads up in the race that goes green. Where was Gillen at? Let's show the speed that he was at. So this entire race here. So Gillen is, you know, he starts twenty fifth. And he runs practically in that exact same, falls 29th in this run, 24th, 25th, 26th, 23rd, 23rd. 20th. So he's like the 23rd best car all day. He ends up being, after with all the stupid shit that goes on, he ends up being the 18th best car in this race. But realistically, he's fallen in line right where he is slightly higher. He's around like 25th. But compared to where he's been, right where he's at. You know, same thing with like Haley. You know, when you look at what Haley was doing. Haley ends up being the 23rd best car in this situation here. But when we look at where he's actually running, you know, in terms of DFS, 
you know, like he, he's pretty much, you know, I, I mean, at this point, a lot of teams are um, surviving off of like DFS teams are surviving off of value plays that are scoring like anywhere from probably 14 to like 19, 20, 21 points. Could be wrong. Uh, but this is just things that I look at as, as live scoring has happened, trying to keep up with where people were scoring. That's one thing I wish DraftKings would add. I'd like nobody would use it. I'd be like one of four people that would actually fucking give a shit about it. But if you could have, if when you pull a CSV, I would love it if they showed the, and you, I mean, you can make people make this stuff as well. Like you can make it your own and, and have it calculated. I already know people do it, but it'd be nice if they pulled the CSV and they would show you where everybody was scoring at a certain increment in time. And I'm not saying it has to be at a stage end or whatever. It could just be, you know, 25, 50, 75, hundred percent of the, of the race. I don't give a shit if it's under yellow or whatever, but it'd be cool if you had like those four things to show how people were scoring at a certain time, because that's what really matters in terms of projecting lineups. Like this Kansas race, like if when you're looking back at it in the fall, you cannot look at the results of this race. This is not an accurate representation of where these guys were at in these races. Now you might argue that Brandon finishing position, all that matters and I completely understand that, but in terms of building based on this type of finish, that is not what I want to be doing at all. Um, because you are overvaluing place differential gained in the last 100 laps of this race, if not even less, because it's truly, you know, we go green at this point. We have, um, this is basically your last 60 laps, okay? We're overvaluing, you know, Positions gained the last 60 laps of this race due to three back-to-back -back yellows and a late race restart where several teams were smart enough to take two tires. I mean, I can't believe that people are still taking four in a situation like this, but tons of people took two tires um, on this green white checkered. Drex is the first to take four. He flies up and finishes fourth in this race, if I do believe. Uh, but like that's crazy because he goes from like 12th to fourth on the last lap running the high side. Or on the second to last lap around the high side. But like, you know, be just 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 be aware of all that type of stuff, man. Like everybody that's why I I think that, you know, we'll we'll sort this by the end of stage two again. Uh let's go ahead and do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. So like where was everybody at in this race? Where did everybody fall in line? You know, so we had Busher practically being and we're just gonna I just want to go over here and count down. And we can kind of see where they started. So Busher starts 12th best car. Larson second best. Hamlin third best. Kyle Busch is pretty surprising. Uh, able to maintain, which we're, we're, we're seeing as of note, why it was I think it was worth playing him at Dover because he's certainly showing top 10, top 7 upside. Like that's that's re certainly respectable. We just are respectable. We just got to like he's running third here. I mean, this is coming out of a pit, st pit sequence, but... That that's pretty nice to see out of out of Kyle Busch. We have Truex be, you know, the fifth best car, at like practically no fucking ownership at all. I just cannot believe it. Um, Gibbs showing respectful speed, absolutely throws it away at, at at the end of a fucking horrific pit call. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Like I don't know what the hell they are doing in the fifty four crew, but like, oh man, dude, what a what a disaster. What a disaster. Involved in a wreck and uh, just, just, uh, hold on, give me a moment. Okay, sorry. Um, disaster throwaway at the end. Uh, practically, you could argue, you know, six best car, where does he end up being? Ty Gibbs due to just running like absolute horrific. That also, yet again, like let's, where is driver rating? Let's, let's argue. Let me really... Let me really, really argue why driver rating is one of the biggest crimes against humanity that I have seen since the Holocaust. Uh, when we look at where, like, if you just look at driver rating here and the, um, now, you're going to see some similarities here because my stuff's taken all the laps together. And we can see that Gibbs ends up being ranked the, um, 13th best car at Kansas, okay? But we have just noted through the first 167 laps 
this man has practically been the sixth best car here. Okay, so not only, you know, is my stuff also showing that, like, you know, he ran like ass the last like 100 laps and really threw it away here. But when you look at like driver rating and how this stuff is like busted broken, it is also ranking Gibbs pretty, pretty low. Okay, because driver rating overvalues certain aspects of how the race goes. You know, uh, one, he's lap down, so that's hurting him too in terms of the laps that they're pulling here. But like, realistically, like this is why driver rating is such a horrendous thing because he runs 160 laps practically in the top six, has a bad end of the day, and he is ranked the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. He's actually right with me. Uh, we both have him at 13 based on our stuff. I think there's certain differences. Like, let's just see where. Can I? Oh, boy. Let's see. Let's see how drastically different my stuff is. We should see similarities up top, I would assume. We'll probably have, like, some 1v1s and stuff. Let's just see how my stuff is ranked here. Might be a little bit closer than I'm thinking, but let's go ahead and do a live look here. Oh, fuck. We'll do, hold on. All right, so let's see where, fuck, let's see how drastically different my stuff is compared to this. So we have, the driver rating of my stuff has the same top three. I'm ranking Trex higher than Bush here, same, 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 same. So we actually do rank some of these guys the same. We have slight changes here. I have Gregson higher. I have Bowman higher based on probably him getting through traffic. McDowell, I have Kislowski down. We're the same on Gibbs. Blaney, Byron, slightly higher on Wallace than these guys here. I think usually the backfield's typically the same. So we're pulling the same data points. Um, but yeah, like, so I mean, both, at least that's why I'm like talking out loud of like, hey, this is what you need to consider or think of when you're looking at. Uh, Ty Gibbs because like the guy ran six like all fucking day dude uh, and just threw it away at the end like that's that that's that's really nice to see from Ty Gibbs based on his price and everything uh, that we'll probably see moving forward and stuff um, as we continue to look through let me just make sure it's still sorted by this yes um, so like Bowman's impressive I mean this is this is what I meant of like are people not watching these races like I think Reddick ended up being like what 25, 26 from around there. Had zero, had no fucking in, had no interest in him. And and this is what's concerning of like he's they're just struggling getting through traffic, you know? And we could argue that like Truex and Reddick can be a great example of what you want to see in traffic and what you don't want to see in traffic. Okay, practically starting in the exact same positions. They have to pass the same guys. And Reddick is running right behind Trix, so ideally you you just want to follow Trix through, you know, the field, and he's just not able to do that. You know, Trix is pulling away from from Reddick to where Reddick is just running, you know, in the same positions. Like, that's you know, concerns that you want to see, that, or that's concerns you know, from Reddick entering you know Darlington and Charlotte later this month. You know, you had Bell who just fell like a rock, uh, who performed pretty terrible. DFS wise, real life, as I said, the diff the difference between real life and DFS is two drastically different things. Like this isn't you know that bad of a day from Bell, but when you look at where he is and like what what do you what do you expect? Of course he's gonna be like seventh best driver. That's where he usually falls in the line at. <laughs> like you know that's how I end up ranking this stuff and looking at it. And I guess the show that I mean if you don't want to you know go through and set things up to um, pull like different aspects or it's be more aggressive on certain things. Like you can just look at where drive rating is and just understand that's probably where people are going to end up running at and stuff. Um, anyways, we continue looking at 
like Kansas, and you see that the back of the field, I, I probably should have put salaries or something on here so you can see. But, like, none of the value plays are working out at all. It's literally just whatever is going to end up happening. Like, the Nemechek coming through in this in this race. Like, this is where, like, where is Legacy Motor Club at truly? You know? Gains positions early. I don't know if there's a checkup. I don't know if he's on the outside lane. I don't know if these idiots are running four wide. He gains nine position, 10, uh, 12, uh, 13 positions very, very early. 14 positions. Phenomenal run. Loses four on the pits because he stays out a lap later than most people lap, two laps later. So loses four positions there and then just never gains them back. And then it ends up running like complete trash, you know. So it could have just been, you know, set up extremely well on the on the first run, um, and ends up running like twenty seven, twenty six, and so like he probably ends up being rated higher. Let's see, based on the end of the race, since he finishes like twelfth or something, which we should be safeguarded here because he finishes thirteenth, and that is not overvalued uh, that drastically much for Nemechek. Um, whereas like, yeah, this back of the field, like all the values, I like, there is no favorite value. Let's go ahead and look at the salaries for this weekend. You know, I gotta, I gotta remove this stuff from my stuff later in the week anyway. So let's bring it over here. So where are we at? So we got Hamlin, Larson, Byron, most expensive, uh, your three best guys. As I've stated, um, look at this type of stuff, we understand where kind of everybody's falling in line at. It's not because I'm just getting lower on Byron, not because, oh, my God, I'm pissed off. He's not working. Like, just paying attention to where everybody's falling in line. Byron is certainly falling back. Now, he's not, like, the 10th best car because he's just stuck in traffic and not able to pass. Bad day at uh, Vegas involved in a wreck at Dover. Uh, Kansas finished terrible due to late race stuff. Um so like warranted of probably I'll probably have like twenty percent because I'll still be either with or slightly over the field there. But like Truex, Larson, Hamlin, as I stated in the previous video last week, and that probably nobody watched. I or even, I think I may have said in Dover, I would be very shocked to see to not see four of the five races between Dover, Kansas, Darlington, Charlotte. I guess I probably may have said it at Texas. Anyway, I'd be very shocked to see Hamlin, Larson, Truex not be the winners of at least four or five of those races of uh, four to four of five of those races. How many fucking races we got this month, man? Am I going nuts? I'm thinking, um, so we've had Dover, Kansas, Darlington, Charlotte. Uh, I guess the fifth one was probably Texas. It's probably the fifth one I was thinking of. Um, yeah, like it's it's these it's these three guys, and ideally, you're gonna be wanting to build one, or you're gonna be you're gonna be wanting to build lineups that have two or three of these guys in there. That is what I'm gonna do through the entirety of the month. That's what I've been doing. I would implore you to keep doing that. Uh, very hesitant on Reddick and Bell. Very much looking unplayable. Just straight up, we we don't see the speed that these individuals are showing. Actually, here, let's do it this way. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. I think I took name and salary, hopefully. Yeah. So as we look through and go down and look at where these guys are at, so we have Hamlin. We know where he's at. We have Larson. We know where he's at. We have Byron, as I've stated there. Um, certainly underperforming. In these races here, you can argue luck, you can argue bad luck, but still, like, even in, in race speed, he's, like, 7th, 10th best car, somewhere in that range there. Um, certainly warranting less ownership. At least, speaking out loud for me, because I just kept playing him when nobody was playing him. When we get to Truex, it seems that Truex is now the guy, very similar to 2022, or 2021, when the Toyota drivers were the lower-owned guys compared to the Hendrick guys. Truex is just being forgotten at this point. Like, nobody's playing Truex. Time to fucking start ramping up 50, 60 percent Truex because uh, he's going to win a race. He's going to get the lead. Uh, one interest there. Reddick seeming, seemingly unplayable at this point. Bell seemingly unplayable at this point. Once we get down to Elliott at $9,000, okay, right where he's at. 
need practice speed, need good qualifying or place differential um, to be in play. Um, and practice, practice speed qualifying and or place differential. The only way uh, he's really showing there. Chastain getting more and more interested in it. He's, he's, he's kind of leveling. He's right leveling out between like 10th and 7th best. But as it was last weekend, starts up front. He can lead laps. He has the ability to beat guys heads up, head up, heads up, um, as he showed with Larson. Like that's that's impressive to see. Even if he fell off later in the race, in which we can look at Kansas here, go back and look at Ross. Like that's. Let's see if he lost it due to pit road or if he lost it due to racing. So we're racing, 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 pit road, racing back and forth. Larson back and forth, burns his tires off. Okay. Running back third, gets back to the second. We enter in the next pit stops and has just a horrendous time in the pit cycle. Loses four positions, gets passed, uh, maintains his position this time in the pit cycle, uh, gains positions, you know, back to ninth, back to eighth. You know, so we never gained those four positions back that he lost in that pit cycle, but that's warrant. As I said, we've gone green this entire time. You know, I know we have a stage, we have, we have one stage in there, but... You know, you lose four position on pit lane. It's hard to gain. It's hard to pass people on the fucking racetrack, guys. Uh, so like, that's at least with like Ross Chastain. So like, if you run into a situation where like Elliott is, is in a similar situation that like Chastain was this weekend, if Chastain is in a similar situation, if Kyle Busch is in a similar situation, like those guys at nine thousand dollars are very much playable. We look at Brad being ninety two in terms of where he's at. That's expensive. Uh, a lot of this stuff has been due to place differential lately. I would probably not want to be playing Keselowski um, just on the outside looking in. Blaney is an example of like another guy who came or where did he, where did he finish? Blaney. So he finishes 12th. He was 86 if I remember correctly. So I don't know. Let's see. Let's see if I remember Blaney. I'm pretty sure it was like 86. Yeah, he was 86. So... Hits value, probably like a 5-2 or something value. Um, see how, how quickly he was able to get through the field. Yet again, we're not looking at the back. We're not looking at the end of the race. I think he went from like 22nd to like 10th or to 12th or something because everybody was on different pit cycles and stuff. But like 26th, yet again, entering, the way that I view it is, so like Blaney is showing top 10 speed, okay, similar to 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 to, to Byron. Now, the fact that they have that speed consistently shows that they have the ability to pass people with slower cars. It is not going to mean that they're going to win this race when they start in the back of the field because track position is just too important. Unless you can gain that through staying out in pit lane, whatever. But we could see that, like, okay, he should be able to get through the field. And it just so happens he finishes here. Typically, how I view it is, like, okay, if you're here starting in the back of the field, you got to pass people. We're going to lose. We're going to knock it down maybe five, six positions. That should put you right around here. He ends up being, you know. 14th best car, but as we're looking through lap lap stuff, uh, passes through, pass people pretty good. Uh, that's pretty good. That's really good. Back up to 16th, uh, 20 laps in. Like, that's that's wicked impressive. Uh, gains two positions, loses one, loses two, loses one. Back to 14th, loses one in the long run. We're going to pit again, probably. Back to 16th pits. Uh, loses positions on pit lane. Season 17, the end of a stage, I believe. Yeah, 118. At least it should be one, one stage one. 88, my bad. So that is uh, green flag pit stops here. 17th, like that's, I mean, that, that's about all you can ask for Blaney here. At 86, 100 Dollins, that's, uh, that's pretty fine. You know, he's at 9,000, needs 45 to pay it off. It's going to be very difficult for him to do that if he starts up front because he needs to then lead to do that, which is hard, but if he... Offers place differential again. We can do it. Logano. Which, uh, this is a situation where I'm probably going to have very little interest in Logano. It's kind of the same story or same potential that Blaney had. Uh, let's see, he's in 16th. He's just not able to do anything and has a, has a pretty terrible day uh, at that aspect. So, not a lot of interest in Logano. Ty Gibbs. I like him. Like it, like it. Interested in at least like 20, 25% on the outside looking in. 85, uh, real potential to, you know, run seventh all day if he offers place differential or if he starts in a situation where he could fight for the lead early. 
I like it. Bubba Wallace, when is this guy ever going to win a race? I'd like to see him win his first ever race. Don't think it's going to be this weekend. Uh, 2311 is struggling. Uh, not very excited about that. I like where Bowman is slowly performing, moving up. Uh, getting back online with what Hendrick is doing, it seems that they're all four cars are back to running somewhat similar, which it, it's been at least a year since we've been able to say that. It was not the case like that in 2023. Bowman was very much the fourth best car, um, and now we're seeing him slowly move from, like, you know, basically running 15th, 16th, 17th all of last year to entering the top 15 to showing that he has top 10 potential. Um, so that's nice to see. Chris Buescher, just, just going to have to see. you got to respect that did it at Darlington last year, did it at Texas last year, did it at Kansas this year. Um it's hard to predict where that speed is necessarily going to come from, like in practice. Like we're not necessarily seeing that in practice. In all these situations, the Darlington, Texas, and Kansas race, that like there was nothing really screaming that that was a true possibility. Otherwise, everybody would have been on him in that sense. But it is uh, it is so certainly uh, noteworthy, and I will have interest in in. Busher, if he's able to show somewhat decent speed in practice this weekend and or if he qualifies up front. Um, Jones, track history, got to be pulling him here because, like, there's just no reason why you'd play him at 75. Noah, I mentioned uh, talking with Sheets on Sunday that, like, this is impressive, very, very impressive from Noah Gregson. Um, it's so wild that everybody just wanted his head last year when he was in Legacy Cars before he got suspended. Um his 10th best car, 7,200, like, that's that's always impressive, especially if he qualifies, like, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, project him for 10th, and he should be looking pretty good in value. Suarez has been just a disaster, like, an absolute disaster. Um, very little interest there. Uh, Briscoe, 68, like, we're just going to have to see. Like, that's where we get to these guys. Like, this is very much, do these guys offer place differential like Stenhouse for example has been pretty good uh you know I mean when we look at the finishing that he had last week you know he ends up finishing 16th he's actually been like the 16th best car but in order for him to like pay off in this range he has to start with place differential being offered it's very difficult for him to work if he's starting you know right around like 18th to like 23rd it's like that's always there McDowell Dylan, Sindrick, Nemechek, like all these guys down here are just what the projections are saying, you know. And then when you, when you get to like Gillen and stuff, you know, has been the best guy uh, down here compared to what his teammate McDowell has been able to at least offer. Um, but he's 55, you know, we get to Burton. You know, and we just see that all these guys are pretty disastrous. Whenever they work out, it's typically due to how a race ends like uh, Kansas last weekend to where they're just able to gain positions late in the race. Although this, this speed at Dover was still impressive by Hemrick. Now this was him staying out late, but like AJ was right there. Like colleague, the fact that colleague, like colleague are probably going to be the guys that I'm probably the heaviest, especially since their prices are not increasing at the moment. Uh, I will probably prioritize Hemrick and, and Kraus regardless of where they start. Um, at 52 and 51 in order to fill, to, you know, hook in my guys up top. Uh, even though we're just playing the same guys for this entire month. So really, what it comes down to is uh, play Larson, play Hamlin. We already know that. I think you should, I think you should be trying to play at least over 50% Truex because uh, the field is just not – I don't know what the field is doing. I this Dude, this ownership has just been whack as fuck this year. It's been whack as hell. Even like the 20% on Bell, the 24% on like – Reddick, Bubba Wallace carrying ownership this weekend. And then we get to, like, Dover. Like, it, this, it's just been so weird this year. So, so weird. So, like, that's why I'm just not listening to the industry. I don't care what other people are saying. I'm just focusing on my stuff. And uh, I'm going to be building the same exact lines that I did uh, this weekend at Kansas, regardless where people start. So, hopefully this helps you out. Uh, hopefully, you know, you like it or you like this uh I was going to say analyzation that I'm doing. Whatever. Hopefully this helps you out in some form or fashion. I'm going to go overdose on some Tylenol. Uh, I will see you guys in the next video tomorrow if I'm still alive. Uh, see you guys then. Bye-bye.